In conventional WSN designs, typically, the most uh, salient performance matrix is chosen as the optimization objective, while the remaining performance metrics are normally treated as the constraints of the optimization problem. Such single objective optimization approaches, however, may be unfair and unreasonable in real WSN applications since it artificially overemphasizes the importance of one of the metrics to the detriment of the rest. Hence, a more realistic optimization is to simultaneously satisfy multiple objectives, such as the maximal energy efficiency, the shortest delay, the longest network lifetime, the highest reliability, and the most balanced distribution of the node's uh, residual energy or the trade-off among the above objectives. Accordingly, multi-objective optimization, MOO, can be naturally adopted for solving the above problem since it may be more consistent with uh, the realistic scenarios. And MOO algorithms have been a subject of intense interest to researchers for solving diverse multi-objective optimization problems. MOPS, in which multiple objectives are treated uh, simultaneously subjected to a set of constraints. However, it is uh, infeasible for multiple objectives to achieve uh, their respective uh, optima at the same time. Thus, there may not exist a single globally optimal solution, which is the best with respect to all objectives. Nevertheless, there exists a set of uh, pair-to-optimal or non-dominated solutions generating a set of paired to optimal outcomes uh, slash objective factors which is called pair to front or frontier PF or pair to boundary curve surface explicitly. Uh, the pair to frontier is generated by the specific set of solutions for which none of the multiple objective is improved without sacrificing the op other objectives. And this set of appear to optimal or non-dominated solutions constitutes uh, the focus of our interest and it is also called the pair to efficient set or pair to set PS that is mapped to the PF in the objective function space. Diverse approaches such as mathematical programming, based scalarization methods and the nature inspired uh, metaheuristics may be used for finding the PSs of MP MOPS. Scalarizing an MOP means formulating a single objective optimization problem such that optimal solutions to the single objective optimization problem are paired to optimal solutions to the MOT. In addition, it is often required that every pair to optimal solution can be reached with uh, the aid of specific parameters of the scalarization. Representatives of scalarization methods included the linear weighted sum method, the epsilon constraints method, and the Go programming GP-based methods. MOPs are more often solved by bio-inspired metaheuristics, such as multi-objective evolutionary algorithms, MOEAS, and the swarm intelligence-based optimization algorithms, SIOAs, MOEAS M for finding a set of a representative pair to optimal solutions in a single run. As a subset of MOES, the multi objective uh, genetic algorithms, MOGAS, such as the strength pair to evolutionary algorithm, SPA, and uh, the non dominated sorting genetic algorithm 2, NSGA2, have been particularly widely researched in the family of MOO algorithms because they are capable of efficiency constructing an approximate PF. This is mainly due to the fact that MOGAs accommodate a diverse variety of bio-inspired operators to iteratively generate a population of feasible solutions, compared to genetic algorithms GAs that rely on the interplay between genetics and a biological evolution, as IOAs seek to understand the collective behavior of animals, particularly insects, and to use this understanding for solving complex nonlinear problems. One of the most widely used SIOS is uh, the end colony optimization ACO algorithm, which has indeed been evoked for solving the MOPS in WSNS. Uh, several other bio inspired ones 
can be referred to the swarm intelligence sections in the following survey. Okay, now we're going to uh, share with you our previous experience in Georgia Tech. Uh, some people uh, that we have met in Georgia Tech, they're trying to uh, evaluate uh, the materials uh, in a bridge design. And uh, some, I think uh, when we're visiting that, we, we do find some uh, companies in US they seek to set up the sensors uh, for detecting the fracture of uh, the bridge so that uh, the, uh, when the structural uh, conditions uh, is unstable, they can still use that for detecting. This is some applications that we have found. And uh, also, uh, when we were working in Seneca um, TW, they tried to set up sensors uh, for mount climbers just in case that they cannot send their signals for rescuing. Uh, this probably is not a real-time emergency rescue, but maybe they can just left out once they uh, seek for uh, the saving themselves. Uh, that happens in the movie, but we don't know practically how often uh, this, those uh, data collecting needs for that. So instead of uh, all of this, uh, for some maybe more material applications, we think that maybe the space traveling is better. Uh, for example, if you have watched uh, the recently uh, stopped uh, uh, missions of Rosetta, they do trying to re uh, explore the surface of a comet. They're trying to study those uh, geographical uh, issues like the soil and also the mining issues, and also trying to resend back uh, the data. Uh, I think the exploration only lasts for uh, less than one or two years, but it just worked for this, um, we think that might be more practical because if uh, it takes years for some routinely collecting positions, then, and also we don't know whether that place is habitable or not, then this part uh, could be used for a sensor. Some people even claim that it could be used for the military, but we don't know whether uh, such kind of investment is uh, good or not for those uh, money-saving experts. So uh, it just depends. But on the other hand, when you check the movie Titanic, the director James Cameron, after he explored this uh, mystery of the sea uh, with a love story, uh, recently he also has a new documentary about how he drove uh, the submarine uh, as a pilot, uh, as the uh, yeah pilot of the uh, submarines and trying to dig into the bottom, sea, the bottom part of the sea. But we don't know whether that works or not. Uh, but I think for the sensor part of for uh, under the sea, some issues that has been uh, mentioned is that if you put the sensors for uh, long-term monitoring, for example, all those uh, infrastructure that has been taken advantage of for the quiet of the sea, uh, there might be some dangers that uh, those um, animals, they might eat the sensor. Uh, this is what happens during our previously uh, serving as uh, the committee members of a paper submission. So uh, if, you are, uh, if you are interested in that, then uh, you can continue to follow uh, this series of a survey. And besides, uh, uh, because of this uh, multiple objective optimizations are nature, that means uh, uh, due to the cost of the building of uh, those uh, sensors, this is like very, very high expensive digital gears and also uh, harder to uh, explore. So that's why, that's why they're trying to take advantage of a multiple objective uh, optimization. But for this purpose, then there will be some uh, loss of uh, focus of how a good thing, uh, how a product has been designed for that. Because uh, if you can do this, and you can do that, then you, it will be very hard for you to adjust it for a, a uh, for example, the equilibrium point of all both optimization purpose. So that would be the issue. Uh, but uh, if you're interested, in, I think we can uh, continue trying to explore this uh, by some survey that has been studied by AEEE uh, members for you. Thanks for listening. Bye. Now, what would be the potential issues in other 
part, for example, like a digital exhibition. Uh, previously, when we saw uh, some movies, uh, also the red rooms that has been existed in the, the MoMA for NYC, uh, we had some idea for technology development, but it just uh, when we trying to wait it and we still trying to develop it for at least the three years and uh, trying to propose for that. Apparently, uh, the city does not give it, give us any chance for this, but we thought that could be more practical part of uh, the investment. That means even under the new technology combination with uh, art creations, it's a uh, very very exclusive and also uh, for all those uh, technological professions they are forbidden by the range of that so by the end of this uh, survey we're going to mourn through the death of the art combination with the innovation technologies uh, for NYC thanks for listening bye